Come on, let's look around some more," said Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked it up. A ma- a medallion, a gold medallion. Later was engraved on the ma- medallion. A fancy M. Oh man, someone came here before us. Jack said softly. Dinosaur valet. Annie, look at this. Jack said. Call. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the manolia tree. Annie, look. A mountain lion, but Annie wasn't paying atten- attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the the other side of the hill. Oh wow! She said, Annie, clutching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back. Jack shout, but Annie has disappeared. I'm going to kill her. Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion lion into his jean pocket. Then he heard Annie s- s- squealed. Annie, Jack heard another sound as well, a deep blowing sound like a tuba. Jack, come here. Annie called. Annie, Jack grabbed his pack, backpack and raced up the hill. When he got up to the top, he gasped. The valet belong was filled with nest, big nest made out of mud, and the nest were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Annie was crouching next to one of the nest, and standing over her was a giant duck-billed dinosaur. "Don't panic! Don't move!" said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward toward Annie. The half dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arm. Making her two bus sound, Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He kneeled kn- on the ground. Okay, move toward me slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still belonging. Annie froze. "Keep going," Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched further down the hill until he was just an arm distance from Annie. He reached out the, and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down," he said. He crawled next to me, bow next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes. I read that. What if? What you do if a mean dog comes and at you? She's no, she's no dog, Jack. Said Annie, "Just two," said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised raised his head. I don't think she made any more," he said. "Thanks, Jack, for saving me," said Annie. "You have to use your brain." Said Jack, "You, you can just go running to the nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. 
Annie stood up. Annie, too late. Annie held out her magnolia flowers to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your baby," said she. "Said the dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for for another. No more," said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there," Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were claw- crawling out of their nest. Where were the the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the page. He found a picture of some dark blue dinosaurs. He read the captions: The Anatosaurus live in the colonies. The colonies, while a few mothers' baby sat at sat a nest, over hunt for food. So there must be more mother close by. Hey, Jack! Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Arthosaurus. She nice to Jack, Annie said. But suddenly, the Arthosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur broke down the hill. She seemed afraid of some things. Jack put the book down on top of his back pack. He hurried up to Annie. I wonder why she ran away," said Annie. "We were starting starting to be friends." Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance. A moth made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs,、uh, and swinging a long, thick tail, and dangling two tiny arms. He had a hawk head, and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex whispered Jack.